Hello everyone and welcome back. So this time we're going to be doing an example with a couple moments, but using the vector approach, where we just use the cross product to calculate things. So let's try it out. So in this case, you see we have a 450 newton force couple acting on the pipe assembly. So 450 newton meters this direction, and 450 newtons acting in the opposite direction. It's very important that they're acting parallel to each other. It has to be parallel. Now, they're separated by a distance of 0 0.4 meters. Interestingly enough, even though they have an angle here, we don't actually have to use that to get the magnitude of the couple moment. The magnitude of the couple moment is very simple. Um, it's direction. Now, that would be a bit harder to figure out. It's actually not impossible. It's also fairly simple if you know what you're looking for. Um, in this case, we're just going to do it with the cross product method. OK, so how are we going to do this? Well, first off, we use the moment is equal to r cross f to find the couple moment. And you're done. <laughs> it's, it's really actually pretty simple. Um, just be very careful that you use the right position vector um, and the right force. And you'll be good. So r cross f. Um, and this will make it, let's see, around this, it will be a counterclockwise couple moment. Now r is fairly simple, it's just going directly down the x-axis. So we have the distance, which is 0.4 meters, in the i direction. Um, and then our force right here, luckily for us, it gives us this nice little slope triangle, which makes things a bit simpler. So it's not going in the x direction at all, you can see it's in the y-z plane right here. Um, and it goes 0i, and I have 450, because that's the magnitude, times the component that's in the y direction over the hypotenuse. I'm getting a bit too much there, um, so I'll go ahead and erase that. So that's 4 fifths, and I'd use the opposite one for the z direction. Be very careful though, you have to keep that negative sign um, because it is going down. It's going in the negative z direction. That's usually the biggest mistake people make is that they forget negative signs. That's surprisingly important. <laughs> Let's take the moment. Set it up and take the determinant of this matrix. As you can see, I got 0 here, 0 here. Those aren't going to do all that much, um, but we'll still have two components in the end. So let's try it out. So, first off, I get rid of this, try to take the cross product there, nothing. 0 times 0. So, nothing at that point. Then I do it all again, but this time I take the cross product right here. This one times this one, this one times this one. Okay, so that's going to have a component. And eventually I'll do the same thing for the k. These two together, and then these two together. So there will be a j and k component to this, but no i component. And that makes a whole lot of sense. So with that in mind, I add all these together, being very careful that I don't forget that minus sign in front of the j component and I get the Cartesian components of my couple moment vector. It's 108J, 144K Newton meters. Um, big things to think about here is I actually didn't have to do pretty much any of this work if I didn't want to, um, but it does require you to figure out some math because in the end the couple moment has to be perpendicular to both this vector right here and this vector. Um, if it's perpendicular to this one, I can then figure out what its components are going to be. Um, it's going to be simply 4 up and 3 over, I believe. Just opposite. And that should have given it to me. Now, I'm liable to make mistakes, so don't take my word for it. Check it out to make sure. Um, but there are ways to solve this um, without having to do the cross product. But in the end, you're just kind of doing the cross product just a different way. So, how helpful is it? Mm, not really all much. Okay, so here we've done the vector approach for solving for a couple moment. Remember, be very careful about your position vector and the force that you use. Your position vector, your position vector should always point to the force vector that you're going to use for the cross product. Because you can use either one of them, you just have to make sure that you use a position vector that points to that from the other force you're not using. So I hope this helps you, and I'll see you all next time as we try out a few more examples. Goodbye.